My military career consisted of three deployments. I don't think anyone comes back from combat the same. I think there's always a residual effect of, of that that we all try and manage. I'm no different. You know, I've struggled with my own post-traumatic stress issues and sometimes still do. Post-traumatic stress is not a veteran thing. I think it's just a human thing. But from my experience, my post-traumatic stress stems from combat. There's things about that that I still can't come to terms with. No matter how much counseling I've done, it's hard for me as a dad. I want to always be in control of my family. I want to always be in control of the safety of them. But I've found myself at times losing control. It's just one of my things that I struggle with. Sergeant Braza was everything I could ever expect in someone to lead. I remember the first time walking in and seeing him, I was like, oh, smokes, that's, a, that's an Army Ranger. That's a, that's a G.I. Joe. Big, in shape, charismatic funny, rude at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? He could make you feel like the smallest thing in the room and as well as build you back up to be the biggest guy. And we looked up to him. We all did. And as the first stanza of the Ranger Creed on top, it's pretty cool. Recognizing that I volunteered as a Ranger, fully knowing the hazards of my chosen profession, I will always endeavor to uphold the prestige, honor, and high esprit de corps of my Ranger Regiment. I was fortunate enough to have two deployments with Sergeant Barraza and learn his leadership and become friends with him outside of the military. When I went to ranger school, uh, I graduated and got injured and I couldn't go to our next deployment. He deployed to Iraq and was killed in combat. It was hard to hear because it was unbelievable to think that someone of his ability can be killed. It scared me, like literally scared the life out of me that someone so good at the job could still be killed in combat. lives a long time in guilt. Guilt that I wasn't there, guilt that it wasn't me. At some point I realized the only way to make him proud is just to live the most fulfilled life imaginable. And I want him, my other ranger buddies, to know that I, I, like, I don't forget a damn thing. It eats me, it eats me alive and I hate that people will take this life for granted. I won't do it, man. So I'm here to give the world my heart, to show them I deserve to be here. And if I'm just a voice for them to their lives to, to live on through me. It's super important for us to have the conversation about post-traumatic stress and mental health. It's valuable for people in our position to speak openly about it. There's gonna be emotions involved. And that's okay. <laughs> Art can be a form of therapy. And to see him be able to have fun and have that release and play is really incredible. Do it until, and do it until you don't. Ultimately, it's up to us to learn how to heal. It's not just a brain thing and a head thing, because this stuff resonates in your body. Yeah. I think it's beautiful that Elgin allowed us to bring in real veterans into my storyline. It's very important for me to try and continue to give other veterans like myself opportunity. <laughs> Rocco's been on this journey for years now, bringing in his military community, opening the door for them in the entertainment industry. I hope it makes an impact to people who don't know anything about PTSD and maybe will understand a little bit more about it. Yeah, I'm thinking if I see the gas tank. This show, when they get to see Gilly have his struggle, I imagine thousands, veterans, anyone that have post-traumatic stress would be like, it's okay to feel these things. I should find help. I should reach out to someone and say, what direction should I go for this? And that's what I hope that this does for them. I hope this opens up the door. I hope this makes you ask questions.